Medical school is expensive, no surprise there, but exactly how expensive does it get? In today's episode, I'm gonna break down exactly how much my entire medical school education cost, all the way from my college days trying to get into medical school to now where I am just three months away about to graduate from residency. And when I mean I'm gonna break down everything, I mean everything, all the way from those big expenses like tuitions and living costs to those small things such as supplies and resources. And we'll get into essentially exactly how much debt I am after going through the entire process and compare that to the typical medical student who also goes through the same journey. And at the very end, I'm gonna be sharing some things I wish I would have done differently, so make sure you stay till then. But really quickly, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Laksh. I'm an internal medicine physician who's just now three months away from graduating residency. And here on the MD Journey, I make content to help people like you succeed on your medical journey, but doing it with less stress. So if you're new here and you're listening to the YouTube channel or the podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want, definitely check out all the free resources I have for you down below in the description. But let's get into breaking down exactly how much it cost me to become a doctor here in the US. Let's start with my college tuition. Now, I went to college between the years of 2011 to 2014. So these numbers from back then, I also got my degree in three years to go ahead and save myself an extra year of tuition. So my overall cost for my tuition each year was $9,800. So multiply that by three, ends up being about $29,400, not counting all those fees and extra taxes. Now, because I was a first generation college student in my family, both myself and my parents were very motivated to apply to as many scholarships as possible for myself. And thankfully, we were able to get a good amount. So I think out of that entire 29,000, probably paid just about 7,500 to 10,000 over the span of three years. And thankfully, during college, I made the decision to live at home and drive the extra 30 to 40 minutes each day. It's so really the only thing I was paying for it was books and just the cost of transportation. So we'll just go ahead and round it all up as saying $10,000 for a total of three years of school. And then next we have to transition into actually applying to medical school. First, we have to talk about taking that dreaded MCAT, which for me was about a memory, about $300 to actually take the test and then an extra $300 in just buying books and resources that I used to study for it. And next, we have to talk about the cost of actually applying to the schools. Now, I chose the LACI route because I'm from the state of Texas. So I basically said, I'm just going to do one application. The state of Texas has decided to have their own. And so for me, the entire cost of all the schools at that time, they're about nine to 10 in the state was about $300. But most students choose to actually end up applying through all the schools or at least nationwide through the AMC website. And that costs usually about $70 initially plus $40 for each school. So that typical cost for another student can be much higher, anywhere from $500 to $770. Now that we have college out of the way, now we have to transition into the actual cost of medical school. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have medical school really close to where my family was living. So I did have to make the decision to move to another nearby school in the same state. And so I went to medical school at UT Southwestern in Dallas, Texas, where the cost of tuition at that time was about $21,000. Now I think it's about 25. So multiply that by four years, 84,000. Now I also made the decision to apply for scholarships, but it is a lot harder in medical school to get a significant amount of money to pay off that. And so I think maybe a total, I got about six to 7,000, which I was definitely thankful for, but still brought the total cost of tuition of medical school to about 78,000. And because living at home was no longer an option, this was the first four years of my life where I actually lived by myself. So I got a one bedroom apartment that was subsidized by the school itself. And I lived there all four years. And I think with the cost of rent, which is about 990 plus internet utilities, basic trash, the cost each month was about $1,110. And so total over four years, because I pretty much paid entirety was about $53,280. I just makes me sad. We'll come back to the living cost at the very end of the episode to talk about a few things I would have done differently there. But in terms of things I think I did actually well were things such as my food costs, which were about 250 to 300 on a monthly basis, typically spending about anywhere from 30 to $50 on a grocery trip, maybe eating out once. And at that time with my fiance, we may go for dinner once or twice a month. And so the total cost about a year was about 3000 multiplied by four, about 12,000, which is not the worst for somebody who is still on a budget. Next up, we'll talk about transportation. Now, thankfully, I lived very close to school, maybe about one to two two miles away and I had a car of my own, which was fully paid off. And really the main thing I was paying for were things like just gas and maintenance. The car had about 110,000 miles on it by the time I was in medical school. And I was driving back and forth between another city about three hours away to see my now wife or at that time fiance. And so a total cost of transportation over the span of four years, including car repairs, gas, et cetera, about $5,000. Now, so far we only covered the cost of actually getting into a medical school and just like living nearby it and like transporting back and forth. But the actual cost of being in medicine is a lot more a simple thing such as just extra med school costs, such as buying a stethoscope. I had to buy a stethoscope twice because I lost it about halfway through, about $150 each time, so about $300 total. Things like laptops, you know, I've made a whole video about this um, on YouTube. I'll link it down below if you guys are interested on some of the best laptops and the decisions you should consider when buying a laptop in medical school. But I made the wrong mistake the first two years of trying to buy as cheap as possible and then finding that they would break really easily, which one literally just cracked in half or just like not be able to do the functional tasks that you needed. So I bought three laptops in medical school. 
goal. The first one was about 500. The second one also about 500 because I didn't learn my lesson. And then eventually my third or fourth year of medical school, I bought a laptop I still use today, which is about $1,500. So total cost right around $2,500. Next, we have to talk about the infamous exam fees. Obviously in medical school, you have to take a lot of board or license exams. These are tests that you have to take to essentially move on to the next part of your journey. And if you don't pass it, typically your school won't allow you to go to the next phase. And so you have, at least when I was in medical school, you had step one, which was at that time graded. Now it's pass fail. If you guys need more help on those, there'll be an episode or a video linked down below. The cost is about $645 to if I remember right. More fees may have bring that up to about seven to $800. Step two CK, which you typically will take after your third year of medical school, right before your fourth year, is also about the same cost, about $600 to $800. And unfortunately it doesn't stop there because when I was in medical school, and that makes me feel old as I say this, I have to actually take step two CS, which is like the second part of step two. And I literally had to go fly to a different city, thankfully it was Houston, Texas for me, and take a 13 to $1,500 exam, not including cost of actually living and flying over there. So thankfully they've taken that away, but that was an extra $1,400 added to my budget. And then obviously in residency, usually about your first or second year, you take step three, which is your final licensing exam. That's $895 as the making of this episode. And while all of that feels like a lot, I feel like we're just barely scratched the surface in terms of cost. Next, we have to talk about just resources to get through medical school, because ideally everything your medical school offers within the tuition should be enough to cover for everything you need to pass those board exams, to do really well, to be a great doctor. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And that really varies in terms of what school you went to. I felt like I got a great education, but still needed extra or felt like at the time that I needed extra to do well on my board. So if we talk about just common resources, things like online med ed. Thankfully, I was lucky that my school paid for it for the major rotations that I needed. I also paid for resources like Firecracker, which was really early on in medical school. That was about $300. Common resources like Pathoma, that was 75 bucks. Sketchy, I shared with a few friends on one account. So I paid about 50 bucks over the span of several months. Obviously, I purchased question banks like UWorld, USMLE RX, as well as Kaplan's. So all of those combined ended up being anywhere from $800 to $1,000 in the span of the entirety of medical school. And then things such as extra books, which I obviously can't keep track of all of them. Most of them were anywhere from the range of 30 to 50 bucks. And if you just take about all of the rotations that I had to be on, most of them I bought some kind of textbook or found something online. So overall cost of textbooks, anywhere from $500 to $750. Next up, we have to talk about clothes, which now as a resident, I can be a little bit laid back on and typically wear scrubs to work on most days as a physician. But as a medical student, you have to make your look really nice and presentable. And so I would make sure I'd have to be buttoned down shirt with a tie, nice shoes, slacks, etc. And then obviously have a different variation for each day of the week. Now, thankfully, I'm pretty frugal and I don't really care too much about how I look or how many clothes I reuse for how long. I usually would find some of the best dress shirts. Also, I tend to be on the lengthier side and couldn't really always find the clothes for my size. So I would typically go from places like Ross, TJ Maxx or Marshall clothes where it would typically be high fashion brands and they would be selling them anywhere from 17 to 20 bucks for a set of nice butt down shirts. And so I think in the entirety of medical school, probably spent about 500 to $750. I still keep most of the shirts that I have to this day. And thankfully I've never been that big into clothes. And so I feel like the, what I have got me through it, it still does the same. Now that so far is what I would consider to be an overall pretty complete list of just the cost of medical school and college this far. But unfortunately that doesn't end there. Next we have to talk about the actual applying process of getting into residency. If you're not familiar with residency is essentially if you're anywhere from your first three to seven years of being an actual physician where you're training to be whatever actual doctor you want to be. So if you want to be an orthopedic surgeon, you would spend about five to seven years within that field. If you want to be an internal medicine doctor like myself, it's three years after medical school. And so we'll talk about salary in those years a little bit later, but there is a process just like it was to get into medical school of actually getting to residency. So number one, we had to talk about the actual cost of applying to residency. For me, thankfully, I went to a good school. I kind of had an idea of where I wanted to go and where I didn't. So I didn't apply to as many schools as most students do. Um, the cost is typically about $99 for your first 10 applications or 10 different programs. And then anywhere from 17 to $19 for each program after that. Um, and then once you get about like 20, then it gets a little bit less. Personally, I only applied to 20 programs. So that put my cost about right under $300, but that's actually pretty abnormal. Most students will go anywhere from 30 to 40 to 50 programs. And that can easily put their application costs anywhere to the thousands. If you're interested in how to do well, prepping to get into residency and don't want to apply to 50 programs, make sure you check out some of our programs and videos down below below of how to increase your chances of getting into residency. But regardless of how many programs you do apply to, once you do get interviews and you're like, oh, I want to check this place out, you obviously have to pay for the cost of travel, flights, hotels, and lodging there. Typically, somebody will usually spend about $1,500 to $2,000, depending on how many programs they apply to, how many interviews they go on. Thankfully, I didn't apply to as many. Most of them tend to be in the States. So I was driving to most locations, and I also had a lot of credit card points. The most places that I went outside of the state were places that I wanted to either visit.
visit or go on vacation with my now wife. So overall, in addition to the credit card points that I had racked up over the first four years of medical school, I had spent about $500 on the cost of travel and lodging. So not too crazy. And you would think at this point that that's pretty much it. Like they've had enough of my money, but no, even before I got into residency into my number one choice, they still required me to pay an extra $200 to do this physician and training license like application in the state of Texas. I'm not sure if it's included in other states, but essentially had to pay to basically say that I could train in the state of Texas, although I got into residency there. Lots of little hoopla's and I'm sure I missed something there. But if you add up the entire cost of everything we talked about so far in this episode, and I may be off by a few hundred, a few thousand dollars, depending on which estimate I took, the total cost ends up being, about to have a heart attack, $169,390. That obviously includes the cost of college, medical school, applying to residency, all the applications and exams and boards and stuff that I had to do. Now what that $169,000 does not include is the cost of interest over those four years of medical school. So my ultimate medical school debt by the time I graduated was right about $192,000 to $196,000. And as I've learned the hard way on the medical journey, the costs never stopped coming. In fact, in residency, I probably spent any from four to five thousand dollars doing things as basically as registering for board exams like USMLE as well as in my internal medicine boards which I'll take in a few months as well as just applying to have my license in the state of Texas where I'll start working in the month of August and having things like my DEA license each of those cost you know a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars each accumulating to five to six thousand dollars of extra cost so if you sum that up with my medical school debt that is a total cost of right around two hundred thousand dollars now I don't know about you but I may have to pause this episode just to have a breath of fresh air and get away from that number but let's go ahead and transition to talking about how my number of 200,000 compares to the typical medical school graduate now the numbers will obviously vary depending on your source I'll link down one that I actually enjoy it break down pretty much every year also different medical schools and their costs if you're interested you can check out the data from educationdata.org I will link that blog post down below but they basically said that the estimate after just four years of graduating from medical school doesn't actually include the cost of college is about two hundred and forty $1,600. And then if you assume that you never paid any type of interest or anything on your loan, then after three years of residency, you're about $289,546 in debt. That's just insane. And depending on how familiar you are with the education tract of being a doctor, you may say 289 is a lot of money, but you're going to make six figures anyways. It's like, that's not terrible. First of all, that's a lot of money regardless of how much money you make. Uh, and two, unfortunately, you go through residency after graduating medical school here in the United States. So for me, thankfully, it was only only three years, but for some people it can be upwards to seven. That doesn't even include things like fellowship. So if you're trying to be a cardiologist or oncologist or a specialist in orthopedic surgery on doing just the spine or the hand, that requires more years. And the average salary for me, for example, in residency was about 59,000. Multiplied by three, my total salary, this was pre-tax, is $177,000. And so if you compare that to the overall debt or just the $40,000 of interest gained over three years of residency, it does start to take an impact. Now, before I get into what I would have done differently, which I definitely hope you stick around for, I was interested on how long it takes the average doctor or somebody who graduates from medical school to pay off their debt, because I really couldn't find an easy number. And after doing a lot of research, really couldn't find a straightforward answer. In fact, I just found that the number varies and it makes sense depending on your tuition, where you live, your situation, do you have a family or not, what specialty you ultimately go into. And so I ultimately had just had to rely on a bunch of Reddit and Quora posts and found that the average was anywhere from about 10 to 12 years after graduating from residency. Typically, people will finish and get their first real boy or real girl doctor job and the average age about 30 to 33. And then found that most people were getting their loans paid off by their early 40s, late 40s. But I was finding some scary stories like this one, for example, in Cora, where somebody was graduating from their medical school debt with $500,000 in debt. Even with a six-figure salary, most doctors don't make more than two to $300,000. Obviously, some specialists will get into the higher range. That is still a lot of money to pay off. And if you add in the cost of other living expenses, such as paying your mortgage or just saving for a house, paying tuitions or paying costs for education for your kids, that is stressful. So, you know, how long it takes varies. For me personally, I hope it doesn't take me 10 years. In fact, as I get my first big boy job in just a few months, I hope my wife and I can sit down and have a plan and of understanding what our kind of goals are, both financially as well as paying off this debt. And so maybe in the next three or four or five years, that debt will be off our balance sheet. Uh, but we'll see. That will be an update that I'll have for you guys as I go through this journey. 
And finally, I want to end today's episode with probably the most important part of this. The number is nice. It was kind of scary, obviously, for me to go through that, but hopefully it gives you a little bit light of the different costs, things that you would probably have to consider. And I will probably argue that my cost of medical school education, just compared to the average, is a lot cheaper. I went to a state school. I lived at home. I had some scholarships. Things worked in my favor. That may not be your case at all times. You may be applying to more residencies because, you know, med school was a little bit harder. The board exams can go your way. You may have gone to a mid or low tier institution. That means you just have to apply to more programs. So just keep that in mind is that if, if anything, I would go ahead and look at the estimated cost. And if you're living in an area that has a higher cost of living, like the Northeast or in the West Coast, like California, then that cost will definitely be higher. So use some of those numbers, use the data from the blog post that I'll link down below to get those numbers yourself. But let's go ahead and break down some of the things that I would have done differently, starting with number one, which is I definitely would have bought less resources until definitely pressed to do so. Now, the cost of resources and paying for things probably wasn't a big proportion of the total cost of medical school. We'll get into that in a second. But one thing I did feel the worst is when I bought a resource, even if it was like $300 and didn't end up using it. And I feel like the value of your dollar, especially when it's you ultimately paying for that loan later, you have to remember the rule that you typically, if you borrow a dollar, you typically will pay about $2 back for each one. So when you get a resource, you get a book, you get something because you think it's going to help you medical school. Hopefully this channel helps you realize that more resources doesn't necessarily mean better results. If you're interested, all the free resources linked down below helps you understand how to actually get those better results. But I've learned from experience is that if I bought that $300 resource now, probably would have done the test. Would I pay $600 for this resource? And if the answer was no, probably wouldn't have bought it. And that would have helped me with any book, any type of resource, any type of QBank, because it would have forced me to say, one, luxury, you're going to use it. And two, is it worth double the price? And if the answer was no, then I probably would have held off until I made that decision that yes, it was later on. Number two, I would have definitely decreased or considered decreasing my living costs. Now, because I would have never lived on my own and trying to then figure out how to balance living with a roommate, I just made the decision, at least my first year, to live by myself. And I think I got comfortable despite the cost of my rent, which arguably was pretty low at $900 in central Dallas, Texas, even at the year of 2015, that was pretty low. But I had, you know, great relationships, great friendships in the span of my second and third year of medical school. I could have easily found somebody to live with and find a good situation where that rent may have gone from $900 to even $700. That would have saved me thousands and thousands of dollars over the span of four years of medical school and ultimately in my med school debt. And do I think that living by myself gave me that much more compared to twenty to thirty thousand dollars I could have saved? It's arguable. You know, living by myself is where the empty journey started and where I was able to do all of this video and podcasting. So maybe it was worth the extra cost, but you know, honestly, I don't know. But that was something I'd be at least considered to give you to keep as food for thought when you're making that same decision. Should I live by myself or should I live with a roommate? I'd probably argue, find a roommate, and if you can't bear them, try to find another roommate until you say, I have to live by myself. Reflection number three is definitely consider going to a cheaper medical school. If you have the decision, which thankfully medical school you do, between looking at your options, I would at least say that if two institutions are roughly similar, one even a tad bit worse, I would consider going to the cheaper option, knowing that you can work your butt off and overcome the difference. Now, obviously, if the difference is that I want to become Surgeon General of the United States and you're getting into Harvard and another, another mid-tier, then obviously one option is going to help you achieve your goals. But if you're not really quite sure what your goals are going to be, you're like, I just want to be a good family medicine doctor. I want to be a good surgeon. I just want to be a good doctor. And this place is close to my home. The tuition is nicer or this place is in a fancy area, but they overall get into the same kind of residencies depending on what I'm interested in. I'd probably say find the cheaper option. You'll definitely save yourself, you know, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, honestly, over the span of four years and definitely with all the interest that you'll cure. And finally, reflection number four is definitely look for more scholarships. This definitely became more of a priority for me as I started to see my med school debt start to build up definitely my third and fourth year. But as I've learned the hard way, it is hard to make a dent in your medical school education with just one or two scholarships unless they're really big. It's sometimes much easier to find a few smaller scholarships that you cure for over time. You just have to make that practice before getting into medical school. Ideally, your institution gives you some educational scholarships and then you just keep doing the process every year and try to see if you can just make some kind of small dent over the span of four years that's going to be a big dent. Now again, for me, I was gracious enough to get about $7,000, which again is still a good chunk of change, but I'm pretty sure if I decided to just be a little bit more proactive, I could have at least found more money that would have now made me have to pay less at the moment. But that, guys, is my entire breakdown of how much it costs me to become a physician here in the United States. Now, I'm obviously not done. I know even as I'm becoming a doctor, I'm going to have to keep paying for more and more. But hopefully this gives you a nice breakdown of the entire journey. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below if you're watching on YouTube. Again, my numbers don't necessarily mean they're going to be your numbers. In fact, I'd argue that you probably should estimate over whatever I brought in this episode. Do you have any questions? Make sure you add them in the comment section. If you did feel like you got some value out of this, that's really all I try to do in these 
these episodes because honestly, the majority of what we do here by design here at the MD Journey is meant to be free. I would argue about 99% of it. And that's to essentially help you do better on your journey from my successes, my failures, and all other people that I've worked with over the experiences. So if you feel like, man, yeah, there's some value spit out in this episode, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. If you listen to the podcast, go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe on your favorite listening platform or share it with somebody who you feel like this could help. Maybe not this episode, but something else that we've shared in the past. Overall, I'm hoping that we can just help each other spread some good vibes and a feel that's everyone for themselves. So if you did, just let me know in the comment section, hit that like, subscribe button. And if you did get some value, if you enjoyed this episode and you want more where that came from, definitely consider checking out our med school success handbook. This is really an entire kind of so far a 6,000 word handbook that I've had for lessons and tips that I've gotten throughout my medical school experience that will definitely help you make the experience a lot easier. Medical school is definitely hard. It doesn't have to be as hard as we all make it. So if you want to know some of my favorite tips and strategies that I've learned, absolutely free guide. Go ahead and check it out below. I'm always updating it because I've always kind of remember new nuggets and experiences from students that I work with. So go ahead and check that down below if you're interested. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and check out this episode right here on how to use Anki like a pro, as well as this episode right here on how to study for step one now that it's pass fail. As always, my friends, thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.